I can see that it was last night. Probably wasn't any sooner than, more recent than that, but to test that, like if I push the base of the track, I can feel that the ground has frozen. And that means that the trail is old enough for the ground to have frozen after the fox passed. If it was fresh, it would still be soft. This is the uh, tracks of reindeer. You can see here where they've come through. And this hollow that I'm standing in is where they've been digging down through the deep snow to try and get at the lichen that they eat for food. And this year they're having a bit of a problem because it's been quite a warm winter and there have been thaws that have frozen. So you've got ice underneath the snow on the moss itself. When they can't get at the lichen on the ground, they look for lichen on the trees. And you can see some of that just here. This is called old man's beard here, or it's an Alectoria lichen, and they'll eat that. Further up there, I can see where the reindeer's gone, and there's lots of uh, little pine needles brought down where they've been eating this off of the trees. Now time to check the five fishing lines and see whether or not I've been lucky. Nothing on that one. Oh, yes we have. There we go. That's, that's a fish called a burbot. And uh, very ugly looking fish, but fantastic eating. There we go. One down, four to go. So far, so good. Three. Oh, good one. I can't believe it. <laughs> Hole number four, four fish. My best day fishing ever. I can't believe it. It doesn't normally happen like that, I have to tell you. Five holes, five fish. Someone's smiling on me today. I'd have been happy with one, but that's a real result. <laughs> That'll keep the crew happy for a couple of days. I've learned skills like this from the people who have the deepest knowledge of this environment, the local inhabitants, the Sami. Per Nils Laba comes from a long line of Sami who have made their living from the reindeer. They say this is the toughest job in Sweden and it's not hard to see why. Per Nils spends much of the year working alone as he follows his huge herd of reindeer in their search for food across the frozen wilderness of the north. It's my life, the reindeer. Uh, it's give me food and it's give me money, everything. Do you enjoy your life? Uh, yes, it's a hard life, but it's a... Uh, very nice life. It's a, you, are, you are free and you can do what you want to do. Of course, the one question I mustn't ask you is how many reindeer you have. Uh, then I must ask you how much money you have in the bank. <laughs> <laughs> no! The Sami are the oldest inhabitants of the Arctic. For thousands of years, they led a nomadic life with the whole family working together to look after their herd. Their home was a portable tent called the Lavu, and they developed a rich and distinctive culture. By necessity, they developed a deep knowledge of bushcraft, such as using dry sedge instead of socks, which is warmer and easier to dry. 
Even today, Pear Nils relies heavily on his bushcraft heritage. Reindeer boots are still warmer and more flexible than modern boots. To repair things, he carries with him a traditional sewing kit. And you'll never see him without his lasso, which he uses to catch reindeer, and which he can also use to haul himself out of water should he fall through the ice. And of course, that most important tool, a knife. Traditionally, the Sami would make use of every part of the reindeer. The sinews were used as a strong thread. The skins were used to make clothing and traditional handicrafts, which they would trade and are still an important means of income. Per Nil's wife, Britt Marie, is an expert in skin tanning and still uses the traditional methods. After removing the fur, she uses a birch bark solution to clean the skin. She then begins a long process of scraping it to remove the loose flesh and create a smooth surface. After further soaking, the skin is then left out to dry. So you've, you've taken the skins, you've taken the hair off of them, and you've treated them with a bark solution yes. and dried them. What happens next? Then I take it inside and begin to work with this. So then when we have taken the skin, then it's hard. Yes. That's beautiful colour. I mean, that's beautiful, yes. but it's still very stiff. You wouldn't want to wear that. No. Then we must begin to work with this. And this is all the young girls' first work is to learn to to make it soft, soft. Soft and supple. Yeah. Uh, you wet it? Yeah. With the with the coffee or with the bark? Yeah, so we've got we've got some of the Yeah, we have some of the bark solution yeah. there. Yes. So then I only take That's cool, that's cold, yeah. That's yeah. Cold. So I put the hand in yeah. the bark water yeah. and then I only wet it yeah. like this. And then the big, you begin to work with this. Just like that. Like this. And it takes a whole day. Today, the Sami people still make leather like this? Yes. From the legs, we make the trousers, the winter clothes. From this sort of skin, we can make summer clothes. And that's because you prefer these materials to the modern ones? They work better? Yes, we don't buy the, that because we, we think they have burned too much with the chemical. Chemicals. They put too yeah. many chemicals in the leather. Yeah, in the skin. And then it be too soft, and then it's... Yeah, this is the best one. I understand that. This is the knife blade that Julius made down in Carlsborg. And I brought this north because there's a real tradition up here in Lapland of making beautiful knives. And uh, the handles are made very often from a composition of leather, bark, antler and wood. And the, the antler they use is reindeer antler. This is the antler from a reindeer that's a male reindeer that's six or seven years old. And one of the things about this material is its solidness. The marrow in here is very fine, making this antler much stronger, say, than uh, a red deer antler. Small discs are cut from the antler, and these, along with leather and wood, in this case a beautiful piece of patterned birch, will make up the handle. The pieces are slid onto the tang of the knife and glued into place. The final piece of antler is secured by riveting over the end of the tang. This holds all the discs in place and gives the handle its strength. Once the glue is dry, there is the laborious process of filing